Well, nobody ever said being a Spurs fan was going to be easy. We've had years and years and years of disappointment. Um, and so the, the, the announcement that the new stadium won't be ready um, this side of Christmas is just another, another disappointment that we have to, that we have to face. Um, I wasn't going to do any more videos, uh, not like this sort of thing anyway. I did think about, you know, talking about games and stuff, but this is kind of a different video to a certain extent. I'm a, a, a big social media fan. I'm terrible. I'm, I'm, I know I'm old, but I still, I still love it all. You know, I, uh, I do watch Chris Carlin's, um stadium updates um, and the guys from We Are Tottenham Fan TV. I know they're not everybody's favourite cup of tea, but I, I like them. I think they're good, good lads, and, and especially having their granddad around. And, uh, you know, some other stuff I, I really like. Kerno, Spurs, they do a great podcast as they travelling up from uh, from Cornwall at three o'clock in the morning and all that sort of stuff. And uh, love the shirt, um, the fighting cock, that Flav Bateman, I, I guess. Um, I've never don't think I've ever agreed with him as much as I did in his last podcast. All really good stuff, uh, and and so I I do tend to get involved in it all. The only other one I guess I'd like to give a shout out to is Expressions. <laughs> Again, I know he gets a lot of stick, but he makes a lot of people smile, and uh, and he is a funny guy. Uh, he's actually a nice guy if you if you take the time to meet him and talk to him. He is a nice guy. So as I say, I'm a big social media fan. I, I get involved in in all of it. But it can be a really horrible place sometimes, and last night was no exception to that. Um, it felt really, well, it felt real nasty um, to a certain extent. And I guess a lot of that is anger. You know, people are angry um, about the, the stadium situation, and I do understand that. Um, but I guess I am a bit of a, a happy clapper in the fact that, you know, I, I continue to support the club and... And I can see it from from the club's point of view. I think when they, I don't think they initially set out to stitch anybody up. I think it was always a tight deadline to have it ready for the start of the season, um, and you have to have a contingency. I, I get that. And so, the plan of um, a few games away from home and then moving the Liverpool game and so on. I kind of or the, the, the couple of games before that. I kind of got, and I thought, well, you know, and I did make a video about that, and I thought, well, you know, it's it's one of those things, buildings, they never go to plan, you, you're always going to have um, delays and problems and all the rest of it, and, uh, you know, that's that's just what happens when you have any kind of building work done, and I think anyone who's had anything done, you know, whether it be an extension or a bleeding, you know, loft conversion or conservatory or whatever, you'll know what I'm talking about, you know, in the... Um, words of Sarah Beanie and in, in her days you know you'll always end up um, paying double and you'll always end up waiting an extra six months to, to, to get it, to get your project finished so I guess that's uh, always the same that was so uh, you know I, I kind of get that <laughs> look, look who's that you can shy so um, so I kind of get all that and, and uh, I understand where where um, the club's coming from I think the difficulty around it is having said that we were going to not be able to get in there for the 15th of September um, that would have been a good time to come clean and say okay guys um, you know what we're, we're not going to get in for, for the 15th of, of uh, September it's likely going to be next year um, because actually we've got a lot that's not really finished if that's the case the problem is <laughs> the problem is none of us know if that's the case we don't know why there is a delay yeah we can all look at the the pictures and go well this ain't done and that ain't done and all the rest of it but but the point is what actually needs to be finished for us to get in there is the problem the wiring or not if it is you must have known back in um, August that when you took the decision not to go in there on the 15th of September, the club must have known a revised idea of, of where that was leading to. 
So if they'd have come out at that point and said, listen, guys, I think it's going to be the beginning of, uh, of January around that time and we'll update later uh, as, as further information comes available. But in the meantime, we're going to give you the money back for these games so that you can then plan what you're going to do with those games, whether you're going to go, whether you ain't going to go, whether you're going to go to a different part of the ground, whether it's going to be cheaper for you, whether it's going to be more expensive for you, whether you're going to go to cup games instead, you know, and so on and so forth. Now, I guess, you know, ultimately it doesn't apply to everybody because if you bought your, your season ticket on, on finance, then I guess you're only paying monthly anyway. Myself, I paid for mine. I bought, I bought mine. I was lucky enough to be able to buy mine outright. And so, yes, that money's mine. You know, I paid for something that ultimately I, I, can't, I can't have. But that's only half true, really, because I didn't buy the ticket to for the new stadium. I bought the ticket to watch my team. So I'm still able to watch my team, just in a different place. And like I've said before, I, I, I watch them on Acne Marshes. I, you know, they're my team. They'll always be my team, and I don't care where they play. I'd, I'd, I'd like to watch them. So for me, it's not all about the, the stadium. And I'm not saying this is right or, or wrong. This is just my personal opinion. But that had been the time when the club could have done itself some favours. So I think quite rightly, a lot of people are upset about... um, Not that it's not opening, but about the lack of information and the fact that they're sitting on our money, you know, and it makes you feel like you're being stitched up, you know? And I can kind of... I can really understand that. But... As an happy clapper, I have to say, me personally, um, I'm looking forward to when we get into the new stadium, whenever that is. But in the meantime, I will be watching them regardless, whether that be at Wembley, which, you know, uh, I'm with you, with other people on this. I hate Wembley. It is soulless. You know, you try to sing, you try to get the crowd going. But it is a soulless bowl. The pubs around it aren't interested. They're not prepared to 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 try to look after you or make you feel like it's your home. And I think the pubs and the the clubs and that around there have really lost. You know they've really missed a trick there because, you know, I know they're getting our money anyway. But you know, no one stands out as the best pub around and and, and where all the Tottenham fans would go and all the rest of it. So I think they've missed a, missed a trick there. But anyway, so. I don't like going to Wembley, um, but I will. I, I will because it, it's my team. I, I, I'll go to the games I can go to. Um, I, I can't always go to all the games, you know, like everybody, you know, work and that kind of stuff gets in the way. But what I'm, I guess what I'm saying is, that, you know, yeah, be unhappy about the fact that the stadium's not open. I don't necessarily think it's a farce and I don't think it's an embarrassment and, and all that stuff. And listen... Talk Sport will be making as much mileage out of this as they possibly can. You know, they will be clickbaiting you all week over this. You know, it's Spursy and can't even get the stadium ready and all this kind of stuff. I, I would just say, don't bite that crap. You know, Adrian Durham, the man's a fucking idiot. You know, and he's just trying to get more and more revenue for the station. That's his job, I suppose, you know. But the man's an idiot. Don't don't buy into that bollocks from him, you know. Um, so, uh, you know, there are plenty of people out there that have got decent things to stay, say and everything. You know, Tottenham's our team. We love them. We're going to support them regardless. You know it. I know it. Are we disappointed? Yeah. Are we entitled to be upset about the money situation? Yes. Definitely. And I think the club needs to recognise that it would be a good thing to do would be to pay us our money back and give us some clear indication of what's going on. What's causing the delay and how long is it going to be? It's not like we're all going to say we want our own, all our money back because they're going to get it back anyway because we're going to be buying tickets to Wembley. So, you know, it's not a risk. And I think we deserve to know. We deserve to know what's going on. And I, Daniel Levy, that's your challenge, mate. Tell us what's going on. Up Spurs.